Hello once again, thank you for joining me. It's Matthew here from Matthew North Music. And as always, if you do like these videos that I post, please think about subscribing to the channel because it really does help the channel grow and it helps me be able to make more videos for you to watch. And if you enjoy this content, please think about hitting the like button as well. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about an album. Now, this record was for many years the number one album on any record collector's list of things to find. And I think to this day, I think everyone probably thinks by now they're never going to find a copy or not an original copy. And the album I'm talking about is this one, Round the Edges by a band called Dark. Now, they were a progressive rock band from Northampton and they released this album in 1972 and they pressed a sum total of, I think, 36 copies. And they all had handmade covers and they were basically made for sort of family and friends. And it's become the most collectible album of all time, pretty much. And it has been known to sell for upwards of £35,000, which is a lot of money for a record. Anyway, this one I have in my hand is not an original, obviously. This is a reissue, and this is on the Italian Arcama label. Now, this album was legitimately released on Arcama in whenever it was, sometime in the last 15 years or so, as a coloured vinyl LP. But then A Karma decided to manufacture more copies of the album in black vinyl and these were not authorised by the band. And Steve Giles of Dark has mentioned many times on his page that these are not sanctioned and they're, they, these are therefore he sees as counterfeit. Now A Karma have certainly had history with this. I remember a few years ago that uh, my good friend, um, sadly no longer with us, Judy Dybel. Her duo, Traders Horn with Jackie McCauley, they had an album which they then got reissued, but A Karma decided to beat them to it and they chucked out a version of the album. So it, it kind of dented their sales for their reissue, which was very sad really. But anyway, for a lot of people, this is the only way you can get the album on vinyl. But, in recent times, there's been a few re official reissues. Um, I think there was one done back in about 1990. Again, very limited quantities. But there is now a new reissue of this album, which has been mastered at Abbey Road Studios. And it's come out as a limited edition. And I've managed to get a copy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and we're going to have a look at it. Here we go then, this arrived today from, I think it was Juno Records, and uh, it's come nicely packed. And we will open up the package and see what we have inside. Got a bit of paperwork there, take that out. And here there is our album. As you can see, this is a lovely looking package. Um, unfortunately, it's got a a sticker on here with a barcode and this is like a, a sort of paper bag sleeve that it comes in it's a shame about that sticker that you can't um, easily remove it or well, it might peel off but I'm not really gonna gonna risk it because I don't want to damage this lovely this lovely package if we read what's written on here then it says dark crown the edges contending exact repro of the world's rarest 40,000 pound LP Facsimile of the handmade sleeve. There's a poster, a booklet, remastered at Abbey Road. And uh, yeah, recorded in Northampton, 1972, the same year I was born. If we look at the back, you can see it does have a barcode on it. So that sticker on the front was probably put there by the retailer, which makes it even more annoying if I'm being brutally honest. But we've got a bit of bump about the album and the track listing on the back. And I do really like the fantasy art design on here by Mark Sawalski. Hope I pronounced that correctly. It does look really good indeed. Let's take everything out of the bag then. 
very carefully because obviously I don't want to cause any any damage okay there's nothing else in there this then is our record sleeve now that's the what's seen as the the front cover on the most of the reissues and if we flip it round that's seen on the reissues as the back cover when actually that's the the front cover now i presume this is exactly how it was originally and actually one of my old record collector price guides this photo is actually the one that you see rather than the um the photo of the the girl on the on the sofa now let's open up the sleeve and we can see there's our gatefold now it's got a kind of a blue tinge to it and i must admit it does feel and look completely different to the the a karma one if we just if we just compare here um i don't know how well this shows up on the light here but the a karma is, is proper black and white and it doesn't have the blue tinge and i'm guessing if we swap here as well the photo here is a lot sharper than the 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 new one but i think it's this is this is taken from an actual original copy so this is exactly how it looked but so I, I don't really like the blue tinge i'm not sure if the original had this blue tinge to it or not but you know we've got what we've got now then if we open up the sleeve here this is our inner sleeve and the inner sleeve has got um all the sort of basic information about the uh, about the album there and on this side as well you know it's given the look of a invoice which i think is uh, based on the uh, the original invoice for the album now the record is just in a paper sleeve it's not polythene lined which i think for a premium product is a bit is a bit tight really because i mean this album was nearly 40 pounds and i think it probably could have done with a polythene lined in the sleeve i mean i will certainly decant this into a now the record doesn't look too bad it's got a bit of a blemish here actually um yeah it, i'm not quite sure what that is i'd really need to look at it in bright daylight because we are, i'm actually filming this in the um in the evening which is why i've just got my little lamp but otherwise the record looks not too bad but there's a slight blemish on there but uh, hopefully that's just nothing nothing bad now then if we open up the sleeve here we should have some other bits and bobs um, which we do and i think that's everything yeah the first thing we have is this which i think is the poster yeah there we go so we've got a really nice poster of the album the new album artwork which you know it's very roger dean in style and uh, the poster looks great it, it's a shame in a way the poster didn't come separately or there wasn't an option to maybe get the the poster sent in a tube or something so it'd be completely flat if you wanted to frame it i don't think i will frame it but if i had the room on the wall i probably would think about putting it in a frame certainly if i owned a record shop i might well think about hanging it up because i mean it, it does look great anyway that's our poster We've now got this sheet here, which is uh, like a, an insert, double-sided. So we've got uh, a load of writing there about the, uh, about the album there. And then on this side, we've got a catalogue of other products by Dark. Now, I think what they've done is this label have um, basically put everything out on, on vinyl. So they, they put out live stuff and demos and uh, all sorts. And there's actually a, a version of Dark Around the Edges, which you can see here, which has got like a doodled sleeve and they did a very short run of those. I think this one is, is the, main, the main reissue. And then we've got this booklet here. Now this has been put together by um, Steve Giles from Dark. And uh, let's have a look at some of this. I'm actually going to go from the back because it's just easier to flick through. So here we've got a, a personnel listing. We've got a photo here of some of the gear that was used to record the album. There's various photos of the band. 
Um, you can tell by this photo that where they lived in, looks like it was a, a new town or a fairly new town. I think Northampton's not that far from Milton Keynes and various places. There's photos of the band there in their rehearsal room or a gig venue. I'm not quite sure. Um, then we've got on the next set of pages, if I can flick through this. This paper's actually quite thick, which is nice. There's a load of uh, receipts and paperwork. There's a school photo there of where the band works. They all went to school together. And there's more uh, reviews and info and stuff. There's some nice old photos here. And then you've got the handwritten lyrics. Now, I'm pretty sure these pages here um, are very much based on what was on the original booklet when the uh, the album was first made. I mean, look at that nice big Marshall stack there. And uh, probably Sims Watts or something. Oh, it's a Marshall PA. Marshall PA out there as well. So uh, they must have done all right because they certainly had some decent gear to play through, unless they were supporting someone else. I think they did support Status Quo at one point. Uh, was their their big gig according to stuff i've read on their facebook page and uh yeah there's the that's the booklet so actually i think this is a pretty nice package and this is it then you've got the in the cover you've got the bag you've got the booklet you've got the poster you've got the printed inner and you've got this uh this insert sheet as well and that's what you get now this album is in the limited quantities and I bought this album from a retailer and that retailer doesn't have any copies left in stock. So if you are after one of these albums, then I would recommend you try and get one as uh, soon as possible. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.